The diamond lattice is connected to the Collatz conjecture. Let me show you why. First off, this is the diamond lattice. This is a common way for atoms to be arranged in crystals, and you can find it in diamonds, of course, but also in semiconductors like silicon, germanium, and in many other crystals. Now, if we chain X-ray photons into a crystal, those photons will be reflected away in different patterns depending on the structure of the crystals. And this is very useful because if you don't know the structure of a crystal, you can use this technique to figure it out. And we can even use it to find the structure of very complex molecules and many other things. This technique is called X-ray crystallography, and it is a whole branch of science by this point. And in crystallography, a very important formula is the structure factor. The structure factor tells you the intensity of the X-rays that are reflected from different positions inside the crystal. I won't go into details about how we figure this out, but I'll tell you how it works. Here, the vector Q represents a position within the crystal given by the coordinates H, J, and K, while the vectors V, I encode the information about the structure of the crystal. Every crystal structure has a different set of V vectors. For example, the V vectors for the diamond lattice are just these two. I know they look deceptively simple, but using them you can construct a diamond lattice. Using these vectors, the structure factor for the diamond lattice ends up just like this. Now we can look for the coordinates inside the crystal that produce different values, and this is what we find. The structure factor will be 4 if the coordinates add up to a multiple of 4. It will be 2 if the coordinates add up to an odd number, and it will be 0 if they add up to an even number that is not a multiple of 4. There's a lot more to it, of course, but the point is that if you have a crystal and you recognize this pattern, you can immediately deduce the atoms inside it are arranged in a diamond lattice. Now, how could this possibly be related to the Collatz conjecture? I mean, when we look at the Collatz conjecture, it is all chaotic. There are no repeating patterns. If there were, this wouldn't be a conjecture after all. In math terms, we say that it is aperiodic. But the diamond lattice, in contrast, is completely periodic. It is just one repeating pattern, after all. That's what it means to be a lattice. So these two are as different as they could possibly be. Well, as I explained in a previous video, if we look at the vertices in the Collatz tree that branch out, we find that they can all be written as 6n plus 4, where n is just some other integer. And they can be classified into three different families with three different behaviors. If n is odd, I call them stark. These vertices are the only ones that can make a sequence increase in value. They are initially followed by an odd number that is smaller than them, but the next branching vertex will be larger by approximately two-thirds. Some examples are 10 and 106. If n is a multiple of 4, I call them Lannister. They are always followed by two numbers, one even and one odd, before the next branching vertex. For example, 4 is a Lannister vertex. It is followed by 2, then 1, and then 4 again. But other examples are 340 or 52. Finally, if n is even, but is not a multiple of 4, I call them Targaryen. Oddly enough, even though n is not a multiple of 4, the value of the vertex itself is always a multiple of 4. In fact, if you take any vertex and multiply it by 4, you will get a Targaryen vertex, which means that Targaryen vertices start infinite chains of more Targaryen vertices, a behavior that strikes me as incestuous. Now we can see the connection between the structure factor of the diamond lattice and the Collatz conjecture. In both cases, we end up classifying the numbers into the same three families, odd numbers, multiples of 4, and even numbers that aren't multiples of 4. Now, admittedly, this could be a coincidence, but maybe it isn't. Maybe there is a way in which we can use our knowledge of 3D lattice structures, better known as Brabus lattices in crystallography, to increase our understanding of the Collatz conjecture. In fact, this suggests one way we could broaden our understanding of the problem. Instead of looking at the numbers in the Collatz conjecture as individual numbers, maybe we should think of them as sets of three numbers. We could even look at them as points in a three-dimensional space. I'm pretty certain that if we explore this connection, there are some interesting results we could find. And that's what I wanted this video to be, me showing you the results I found by exploring this connection. But I've been too busy. If I had nothing else to do, if I could work just on this for a month, then maybe. But I found this back in February, and I haven't been able to make any progress since then. 
So I decided to finally put this observation out there in the hopes that someone else will make better use of it. Let me just end the video by telling you three interesting questions to explore here and one crazy thing I just thought about. The first one is about partitions. A number can be written as the sum of other numbers in many different ways. These are called partitions. And in this case, we are looking at partitions made by three numbers. Is there some sort of pattern between the partitions of the vertices of the different families and how they connect to each other? What about partitions with negative numbers? I mean, the collapse tree can be expanded into the negatives after all. The second one is about plotting the collapse tree in a diamond lattice. I mean, it's right there, practically begging for someone to code it. In the end, it might look like pure chaos and we learn nothing from it, but who knows, maybe it has some interesting patterns. Also, you could try to plot it using negative coordinates. The third one is, what about other lattices? The collapse tree comes from the 3n plus 1 rule, but we can generalize it into qn plus 1 and make other trees. Are these other trees connected to other lattices? Alternatively, if you take any crystal lattice, is there a way to turn its coordinates into something like the collapse tree? And finally, a crazy one I just thought about while recording this video is this. The 3n plus 1 rule is connected to a lattice in 3D space. Could the qn plus 1 rules be related to lattices in q-dimensional spaces? Because if that's the case, there could be something special about spaces with 3, 5, and 181 dimensions, since these are the only rules that are known to create loops. And there are probably many other interesting connections to explore, but those are the ones I thought about. So yeah, that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you work on this and find something interesting, please make a video about it and share it with me. And even if you don't find anything interesting, please also share it. Like, work is valuable even when we don't find great success, right? Just by trying really hard, it's already valuable. Anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye.